Ever wondered why malaria, a disease known to mankind for centuries, continues to be a global health challenge? At the heart of this persistent problem lies a tiny but complex parasite, Plasmodium. Understanding its life cycle not only demystifies the disease, but also aids in designing effective treatment and prevention strategies. There are five species of Plasmodium that can infect humans. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malaria, and Plasmodium nolisi. Each has a unique life cycle and presents its own set of challenges. The journey of Plasmodium begins in the gut of a female Anopheles mosquito, where it exists as a sporozoite. When the mosquito bites a human for a blood meal, these sporozoites enter the human bloodstream and travel to the liver. In the liver, the sporozoites invade hepatocytes, the liver cells, where they mature into schizonts. Each schizont then bursts open, releasing thousands of merozoites into the bloodstream. These merozoites invade red blood cells where they consume hemoglobin and multiply. Eventually, the infected red blood cells burst open, releasing more merozoites into the bloodstream, and the cycle repeats. Some merozoites transform into male and female gametocytes, which can be ingested by another mosquito during a blood meal. Inside the mosquito's gut, the gametocytes mature into gametes, fertilize and form a zygote. The zygote becomes an oocinet, which penetrates the mosquito's gut wall and forms an oocyst. Inside the oocyst, thousands of new sporozoites are produced. When the oocyst bursts, the sporozoites migrate to the mosquito's salivary glands, ready to infect another human host. Now, let's recap. The life cycle of Plasmodium is a complex process involving both the mosquito and human hosts. It starts as a sporozoite in the mosquito's gut, which is transferred to the human host during a mosquito bite. The sporozoites invade the liver cells and multiply, then burst out and invade red blood cells. Some of these transform into gametocytes, which can be picked up by another mosquito, leading to the production of more sporozoites. Malaria presents with a wide range of symptoms, from fever and chills to severe anemia and neurological complications. While anti-malarial drugs can treat the disease, prevention is always better. Measures include using insecticide-treated bed nets, indoor residual spraying, and in some cases, anti-malarial drugs. In recent years, the long-awaited malaria vaccine, known as RTSS, has shown promise in reducing the incidence of malaria in children. However, it's not a standalone solution. A comprehensive approach that includes prevention, prompt diagnosis, and effective treatment is key to controlling and ultimately eradicating malaria. In conclusion, understanding the life cycle of Plasmodium provides valuable insights into the complex nature of malaria. This knowledge is instrumental in the ongoing global efforts to control and eventually eliminate this devastating disease. Remember, every stride we make in understanding this parasite brings us a step closer to a malaria-free world.